a politician, warlord, and the third religious leader of the Taoist order known as the Celestial Masters. This sect was started by his grandfather in the 2nd century, and continues on to this day following the death of the 64th generation master in 2008. Information surrounding Zhang Lu's grandfather, Zhang Daoling's life is obscure. Legend tells he was a descendant of one of the three heroes of the early Han dynasty Zhang Liang. Zhang Daoling served in office but retired to live in recluse, where he practiced Taoist methods for living a longer life. In 142, the deified Lao Tzu apparently appeared in front of Zhang on Mount Hermeng and bestowed upon him the title of Celestial Master. Lao Tzu warned that plagues, beasts and demons from the three offices and six heavens of the underworld were about to be released upon humankind. Only 240,000 people would be chosen as survivors known as Seed People to populate the New Age. Zhang Daoling went on to become the founder of 24 parishes throughout Yi province that spread the teachings known to outsiders as the Way of the Five Pecks of Rice. The Celestial Masters were the first group of organised Taoists. Before their foundation, Taoism did not exist as an organised religion. His new covenant grew far and wide throughout the land, but the number of parishes increased up to 28. They reformed supposedly degenerate religious practices, such as animal sacrifices or stocking up with wealth and riches. Zhang Daoling started a health cult that gathered many followers. He advocated certain longevity practices, such as the rejection of food. Some of his teachings, such as illness being caused by sin, were recorded, but many have been lost throughout time. A 6th century commentary on the Tao Te Ching, the Xiang Er, is traditionally ascribed to Zhang Daoling, but this work may not reflect his actual teachings. He was said to have died upon Mount Ching Cheng at the age of 123. It's claimed the arcana of Taoism that he learned allowed him to ascend in broad daylight, disappearing on the day of his death, leaving nothing behind but his clothes. As the Eastern Han Dynasty started to fall from grace, the Celestial Masters moved back to their original home in the Northwest. Upon the death of his father, Zhang Heng, Zhang Lu inherited control over the Celestial Masters. Despite having grown in popularity, the group was now being challenged in the area by another shamanistic religious leader named Zhang Ziyu, who was of no family relation to Zhang Lu. Zhang Ziyu claimed to be one of the founders of the Five Pecks of Rice set, and rebelled against the Han twice. He's said to have been a writer for the Yellow Turbans, who came from either Xiangdong or Ba Commanderies. Both Zhang Lu and Zhang Ziyu were contacted by Liu Yan, who ordered them to combine their forces to attack Su Gu, the Han-appointed administrator of Han Zhang. Zhang Lu had his own designs for the area, so killed Zhang Ziyu and took command of his army and religious followers. It's possible that Zhang Ziyu was the leader of a separate religious group entirely, but Zhang Lu's forceful takeover of them eradicated their origin. With an emboldened army, he successfully took control of Han Zhong, where after he renamed it to Han Ning, and started to govern it under the principles of his religion. Celestial Masters had numerous secretaries assigned to them, based on their number of followers. The clerics of the order wore special clothing, and became known as Libationers of the Yellow and Red. There were stationary clerics and roving clerics. Even though parishes had been constructed throughout the region, monastic lifestyle was not their preference, so most Celestial Masters passed down their teachings to their children. They believed in communication with spirits, but had prophecy rituals banned, as they believed the future was supposed to already be known by the cleric without a need for ritual. Some of their Taoist customs may have overlapped with other teachings in some areas, and the Yellow Turbans went on to be denounced as enemies of the Celestial Masters by Zhang Lu. It's said that Zhang Lu's rule over Hanzhong was very humane and civilised for the time. Roads were built throughout the land, with rest stops which provided free food. Taxes and donations were not to be used for amusement, but for the support of the common people instead. Under his leadership was a powerful army which patrolled the borders of Hanzhong's strong natural defences, keeping the civilians in his realm safely protected. This stalwart stance meant that they would not become an easy target for aggressors such as Li Zhui or Tao Tao in the coming years. The Zong tribes, which neighboured the Nanman groups, became interested in the mysticism of Zhang Lu, and so moved to the border of his territory. Zhang Lu continued to follow the orders of Liu Yan until his death, but afterwards he refused to listen to his son Liu Zhang. As a result, their relationship deteriorated, so Liu Zhang ordered for the execution of Zhang Lu's mother Lady Lu, his younger brothers, and many other family members. Zhang Lu rebelled against him in the year 200, most likely encouraged by his younger brothers Zhang Wei, Kui and Zheng, plus his sister Zhang Yulan, who had all managed to avoid execution. In turn, the Han government turned a foe into a friend. They recognised Zhang Li's authority over Han Ning, 
and appointed them as a general who guards civilians. The common people in this realm presented a jeweled seal which was the sign that he should declare himself king. Many celestial masters and subordinates urged him to fulfil his destiny, but Zhang Liu agreed with Yan Fu's warning that this would in fact bring about disaster. When Tao Tao marched towards Han Zhong in 211, Ma Chao and Han Sui thought he was coming for them, so they rebelled, leading to the Battle of Tong Pass. Ma Chao was defeated and fled to Han Zhong, whilst the weakened Tao Tao had to give his army time to rest. Zhang Lu considered marrying his daughter to Ma Chao, but he was warned against it by Yang Bo, so the marriage did not go through. A man like that, who has no love for his parents, cannot love another. Ma Chao borrowed some soldiers to recapture some territories, but he was unsuccessful. The loss of life and repeat failures eventually led to a sour relationship between Ma Chao and Zhang Lu. In the same year, Liu Bei was called upon for assistance in the war against Zhang Lu. When Liu Bei surrounded Liu Zhang at Chengdu later on, Ma Chao chose this time to leave Han Zhong with his followers, to head south and join up with his new lord. Pang De, who had earlier joined alongside Ma Chao, decided to stay in Zhang Lu's service. In 215, Tao Tao returned once more with a capable army, which Zhang Lu stood no chance against, so he wanted to surrender. In the summer of 215, he fled to the tribal chiefs Du Hu and Fu Hu for refugee, but they were both eventually recruited by Tao Tao. Many men from the Di tribes rallied to Zhang Lu's defence as well, but they were cleared out the way by Zhang He and Zhu Ling. The Di king came out in person with thousands of tribesmen to resist Tao Tao when he pushed on through the San Pass, but they were quickly massacred. After making a long and arduous march through the mountainous terrain, Tao Tao reached Yangping Pass. Zhang Wei and Yang Ang led troops to defend the mountain pass, which was covered with defensive structures which spanned for miles. The defences held up for the first couple of months, so Tao Tao pulled his men back, until Zhang Lu's men lowered their guard. A sneak attack at night eventually conquered the pass, where Yang Ang was killed in action, whilst Zhang Wei fled under the cover of night. He still insisted on fighting however, so he led his army once more against the invaders, but was defeated and killed in battle. Zhang Lu considered surrendering once more, but Yan Pu explained, if they surrender from such a weak position, they will have no bargaining power when it comes to negotiations. Yan Pu's plan was to display virtuous character instead. Zhang Lu retreated to a fortress at Baizhong, but left behind all the wealth and treasures at Hanzhong, saying, These things belong to the country, not me. When Tao Tao arrived, he became greatly impressed in the following months with what he heard from the people and found in the treasury, so he sent a messenger to Zhang Lu asking him to surrender. Yan Pu's plan was successful, as Zhang Lu's forces were welcomed warmly into the Wei Kingdom in the winter of 215. He surrendered his state over in exchange for gaining state religion status for Tianxi Taoism. Zhang Lu was appointed as a general, whilst his five sons were granted Marquis titles. Tao Tao had his son Tao Ye marry Zhang Lu's daughter, then he presented the prisoner Ma Xiu to him. Zhang Lu then personally killed him, most likely as payback for Ma Chao's earlier desertion. The celestial masters became divided, as Tao Tao resettled many of them around Chang'an and Luoyang. There is evidence that after Zhang Lu's submission, many of his followers also fled south. These supporters went on to create an offshoot of celestial Taoism, known as the Southern Celestial Masters. Zhang Lu died the following year in 216, where his sons continued to lead the Five Pecks of Rice Order. An unsourced claim states that Zhang relocated to the Han court until it became the Wei Dynasty in 220. As it's written that Zhang Lu died in 216, this could be an incorrect record, or one of his followers, or even just propaganda. This mysterious Zhang, who arrived at the court, used his popularity as a religious leader to lend legitimacy to the new founded Wei dynasty, proclaiming that the Wei court had inherited divine authority from the Tao Church, as well as from Confucian laws. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.